Harold Kronk, how you doing? Doing great, man. How are you doing this holiday season? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm excited to talk with you. You have just so people know, and I want to make sure we like give you have a crazy background. You are the director of God's Not Dead. You directed Unbroken, The Path of Redemption. You've you've directed lots of films. Now you've got a book out, a kid's book, The Beard Ballad. Um, I, first of all, what made you want to dive into this like kid's book genre? Uh, well, I don't know if, if, if it was a conscious decision to dive into it. Um, it was inspired by an interaction I had with my son. Um, one day last, I'm sorry, two falls ago, I picked him up and gave him a big nuzzle hug and he pushed me away and he said, Daddy, your face is all pokey and rough. And I said, well, those are my ferocious facial follicles. And in kind of that moment, I went, oh, there's something there. So the next morning, I went to the coffee shop, actually where I'm recording today, the Red Rooster in Ludington, Michigan. Amazing coffee, by the way. Um, and I do a lot of writing and screenplays here. And uh, it's kind of my morning haunt. And I sat down, and the book literally it just kind of poured out of me. And um, it felt in that moment like it was kind of, kind of something that was like given to me. Cause I read it. I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. So I uh, put it in a drawer for a while and, and shared it with just a couple friends. And they really encouraged me to like, this is important. Like this book is saying something about the importance of dads and sons spending time together and fathers investing in their sons. And, and you need to really push this a little bit. So, so I shared it with my good friend, Troy Duhon, who is the executive producer of the God's Not Dead films. And Troy said, man, there's such a huge identity crisis going on in our country right now. Like this is, this is something that, that needs to happen. Um, so he really, uh, he really put the energy and effort behind getting the thing published. So, you know, it's a, it's a story about fathers and sons. I feel like there aren't a lot of kids books that address that. You know, there's a lot of like family books. There's a lot of, but this this bond between a father and a son, and we know that fatherlessness is a crisis in this country. I mean, there's so many things going on in that realm. When you think about the book and the fact that, again, you're a filmmaker, you write screenplays, you, you do so much in that space, but now you've got this amazing tool that is a touching story. What do you want to do with that? Like, what's your hope for the impact that has? Well, I think that I think that's just the thing. You know, I think there there is such a huge crisis of of fathers fatherlessness in our country right now, and and you know the kids can't help that, and but we can as men, whether it's uh, you know joining groups like Big Brothers and Big Sisters or volunteering at your local church for the youth group, uh, young men. They need, they need father figures. It's really important for us to instill our, our beliefs and our values in those kids at an early age to help prepare them for the things they're going to face in the future. And, and, and that's all, that's a big grandiose notion. But for me, it, 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 like you said, it was, it was difficult for me to find uh, books to read for my son that were affirming and that were fun. And, you know, it's okay to go get your hands dirty and play in the mud and be a man. And, and, uh, um, you know, there's great books for my daughter to read, but I thought, you know what, this would be a fun one for, for fathers and sons. Yeah. And, it, and it's so needed um, today. And then, you know, this is a beard story, right? So there, there's kind of like this beard underlying. And, and of course, when you think of beards, you think of the Robertsons and Phil Robertson ends up, you know, partnering with you on this. How did that, how did that come about? Well, so Troy, I sent the book to Troy and he said, Harold, we got to go get the duck family. <laughs> and I said, and I had a great experience working with them on two of the God's Not Dead films, you know, work with Willie and Corey on God's Not Dead 1 and then Sadie on God's Not Dead 2 and just wonderful people, man. They're such, such wonderful people. So Troy went to the family with the book and they read it and they loved it. And Phil said, absolutely, I'll get behind something like this. And so, um, so he wrote the foreword for it and uh, I'm excited to, you know, to, to have him being part of the book. Yeah. Well, let's let's pivot a little bit to talk about your Hollywood career, because I think it's really intriguing that you are the person who has been behind you know, so many of the movies that the Christian community has come to know and love. God's Not Dead was a real game changer when it came to the filmmaking process for believers. I mean, let's let's be honest. We know that. I mean, it was explosive, that film. I imagine you probably never could have imagined how popular it would be. But but what has it been like for you to enter into that world and to be the person who's directing and creating these movies? I mean, what what is that like for you? Um, 
it's it's been a remarkable journey. You know, I'm I feel so blessed to uh, to have been part of of the God's Not Dead franchise, and so thankful to my friends at Pure Flix for uh, believing in me. I had directed a film for them called Jerusalem Countdown um, before God's Not Dead, and they brought me the script and um, and I read it and I thought, man, this is this has the the opportunity or the possibility to, to be something really transformative. Um, and, and so then we just went to work and, and made that movie and you're right. Uh, we never could have imagined how God was going to anoint that, that film. And, you know, look, I, 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 I never felt qualified to tell, to be the one to tell that story. You know, it was, it's such a big story. Um, I'm just this kid from Scottville, Michigan, you know, who, um, who's broken in so many ways. And, uh, but to have the opportunity to um, make an impact on people's lives, it's been something I'll, I'll cherish forever. What has been the film, and maybe it's hard to choose, I don't know, but that has had the greatest impact on you personally, the film that you've had a chance to work on or even write? Oh man, that's a great question. Um, I think the biggest challenge uh, for me was, was Unbroken Path to Redemption um, because for me to step into such big shoes uh, left by Angelina Jolie and the studio system at Universal. Um, but I loved it. Uh, I loved Louis Zamperini's story. Um, and th the way I describe the difference between the two films is Angelina's film was this incredible story of survival of Louis just getting through what, what happened to him. And, the film, the story I got to tell was, was the story of Lou's struggle for his soul once he returned. Um, so yeah, that's, that film was probably the biggest challenge with the budgetary restrictions, with some of the things we needed to do with the movie. Um, I think we had, I think our budget was the size of the first film's catering budget. <laughs> so, um, so, but creativity within, within constraint has really been one of the things I've, I've become known for. Um, and, uh, and I'm thankful for those challenges because it just makes you work harder and, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, you got to find those, those uh, real world independent film tricks to tell the story in a way that the, the audience isn't going to feel like it's, a, it's a, anything less than a studio, studio film. And um, so, yeah, so, but uh, I think the film uh, Bless the Broken Road uh, is really, is a film that's really close to my heart. That was a film that I wanted to show. Um, I wanted to show Christians struggling with their faith, struggling with uh, with life, what 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 happens in reality. You know, um, so many times we see Christian movies and somebody accepts Christ, and all of a sudden their life is perfect. And yeah, the angels are singing, everything's perfect. There's yep. no issues anymore. Yeah, that's not reality. It's not yeah. reality, and um, you know, I there's a lot of dirt. There's a lot of gross humanity <laughs> that grace covers. And so I wanted to, I wanted to give an audience, I wanted to give the audience and people that weren't even maybe Christians that friends could bring to this movie, um, a hope and, and knowledge that there is hope within our brokenness. Um, so I love that. I love that. Now I'm going to ask this question. I've been asking it to everybody I interview for the past year and some people it trips up other people, they're ready to go with it. But when you think about your legacy oh, and it's, uh, yeah, you're like, going to you trip, trip me up the day before Christmas Eve. Come on, man. <laughs> what would you say when you think about your legacy, when you, when all is said and done and people look back at your career and now you've got a kid's book in the mix, you've got all these movies. What do you want them to, to say about you? What do you want that legacy to be that you've left behind? Um, you know what, this is, that's a great question right now. Not only for, um, for the season I'm in in my life, um, but for the time of year, look, I have, I have a couple projects in development one uh, right now. One is a Christmas movie that I'm super excited about. Um, and, uh, another is a family adventure film. Um, I don't really, and this, please don't take this as a flippant answer, but I don't really care what people say about my career because I've never read a single review of any of the films I've, I've directed because there's so much, you're a hatred. smart man. You're there's a so smart much, man. <laughs> uh, brother, there's so much hatred out there. I mean, I, I, I received death threats after God's not dead, uh, came out. What? Um, Oh man, you, you wouldn't believe well, first, the spiritual warfare that happens. I, 
I just want to, I want to hear that. I want to say why I think you're a smart man is because I always say, don't read the comments. Don't read anything because it, there, like you said, there's so much hatred that exists out there and you see it no matter what you do. And the more you do good work for, for the kingdom, the worse it's going to be. And so that's why I said that, but talk about that spiritual warfare a little bit and those threats, because that that's wild to me. Well, a lot of it's personal and I don't, I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah, there was, um, there were, there was, <laughs> I, I keep a very low profile now just because, um, because of that. And, um, I'm actually working on a, a spiritual warfare project right now with, with my friends at pure Flix, um, that I'm, I'm developing, um, I'm, I'm excited about, but yeah, it's, um, one, yeah, it's yeah. tough. I mean, the whole team at Pure Flix got attacked after God's Not Dead. And so, um, yeah, just we definitely, you know, there's <laughs> Ephesians 6 is something I come back to quite a bit. Um, I come and, back to that all the time, all the day, time. You know, we're putting on yeah. the whole armor of God. Um, so trying to avoid those those flaming arrows. And uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be darned if he ain't pretty accurate with those arrows sometimes too, so. And he's going to shoot more of them uh, the more you do. And that and that's the thing. The more good you're doing for the kingdom, the more you're going to have, you're going to be up against that wall and facing that. And so I I so appreciate everything that you've done. I love your answer. Like you're not, you don't really care. You're going to do what you're called to do. And and that's going to be what it is. And so um, The Beard Ballad is the book. People go out and check it out, grab copies of it. Harold, thank you so much for taking the time today. You bet. Thank you, man. I just, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and thank you for what you do. Uh, thank you for giving us a voice uh, in, in being a light in some, some of this darkness we're experiencing right now. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.